So, we've discovered that we are not alone in the universe. That changes everything. When we find a signal, it will take a while for astronomers and scientists to figure out what the nature of that signal is. Many people believe in life outside of space, but the only problem is that we have no way to reach them. You may not know this, but after years of studying outer space, we know just 5% of what's really out there. Now, how would you feel if you found out that a spacecraft that's been up there since before you were born just came back with a new message? We don't decode any other animal species on Earth. We've listened to whales, maybe it's a mating call, maybe they're doing calculus, we have no clue. Did humans finally make first contact with extraterrestrial life? Join us as Voyager 1 leaves researchers fascinated with the message it brought. The journey of Voyager 1, in the 1960s, researchers at NASA decided it was time to explore other planets in outer space. In 1972, the Pioneer 10 was the first man-made spacecraft to travel through the asteroid belt. It brought important observations and helped scientists study Jupiter and its atmosphere. With this success, NASA launched Voyager 1 and 2 on September 5, 1977, in Cape Canaveral, Florida. It's been said that's a dangerous thing to do because you risk the entire planet, if it's an aggressive species, maybe they'll come down and destroy the Earth. Their journeys have been nothing short of remarkable. The mission was supposed to last for just five years. Call it a miracle, but the two spacecraft ended up traveling further than expected. The five-year mission stretched for over 45 years, and during these four decades, valuable information and scientific data have been received about the edges of our solar system. The initial plan was to explore Jupiter and Saturn since that's what researchers were interested in after Pioneer 10's success. They also wanted to study a rare alignment of the outer planets that occurs once every 175 years. If witnessed, Voyager would be able to use gravity as a means to practically slingshot from one planet to another. This would have reduced travel time and fuel by a thousandfold. Voyager 1 made its closest approach to Jupiter and captured a few images of the gas giant, its rings, and moons. It then made its way to Saturn. On November 12, 1980, it was just 77,000 miles within Saturn's atmosphere when it discovered the different moons of the planet. Once those two planets were cleared, Voyager 1 began its new phase of exploration called the Voyager Interstellar Mission. Now, this mission wanted to explore the outer boundaries of the solar system because this would change everything about our knowledge of space. Not many people thought that this was possible, but Voyager 1 blew everyone's minds as it continued to embark on an extraordinary trip. To Uranus in 1986? Three years later, it orbited Neptune, and this phase of the mission went down in history as the Voyager Grand Tour. Voyager interstellar mission didn't seem like a dream anymore, it was about to become a reality. In August 2012, Voyager 1 made history by becoming the first human-made object to enter interstellar space. It took 35 years for the spacecraft to accomplish this, and many researchers over at NASA thought that this would be the end. Voyager 1 kept on going, and it wasn't until 2013 when it was in a completely different environment. Interstellar space is when the sun's area of control is lost, and there are many space particles like atoms, dark matter, neutrinos, and photons. It was as if Voyager 1 was in a sea of magnetic fields and a constant flow of particles. It's officially the farthest thing made by humans from Earth. If you were to put a number on it, it's approximately 15 billion miles or 24 billion kilometers away from us. This doesn't mean it's stopping, though, because the spacecraft is traveling roughly at a speed of 38,000 miles per hour. To clearly show how intense that distance is, light would take 22 hours, 32 minutes, and 33 seconds to travel from Voyager 1 and come to us. But what exactly has Voyager 1 brought to us? Has this information been useful to NASA over the years? Voyager 1 discoveries, since its launch in 1977, Voyager 1 has journeyed beyond the depths of our solar system, bringing us important data and information that has made space exploration as big as it is today. This was probably the most successful man-made spacecraft in history because of how it forever changed our understanding of the universe. When Voyager 1 made its way toward the gas giant Jupiter in 1979, it revealed fascinating things about its atmosphere. As compared to the Pioneer flyby from 1973 to 1974, Voyager 1 told us that Jupiter was much more turbulent. The spacecraft took a picture of the planet every 96 seconds for about 100 hours. It captured that many because it needed to generate a colored time-lapse movie during 10 rotations of Jupiter. Voyager 1 also revealed that there was a thin ring around Jupiter which was less than 30 kilometers thick. Records say that its closest encounter with the planet was on March 5, 1979, around noon, at a range of about 174,000 miles. 
the names of the moons it discovered that orbit Jupiter are Amalthea, Io, Europa, Callisto, and Ganymede. Io was found to be the most active one in ways that would even have you scratching your head. The photos that Voyager 1 captured of the moon revealed that it was a yellow, orange, now, and brown the world colors of the moon and the presence of volcanoes? volcanoes tell us? Well, active volcanoes suggest that the moon may have sulfur and oxygen, and the presence of these gases brings all kinds of questions and fascination to NASA. When Voyager 1 reached Saturn, five new moons were found. A ring system around Saturn was also discovered, and this was made of thousands of bands or what scientists call spokes. The moons that the spacecraft captured when passing Saturn were Titan, Mimas, Tethys, Dion, Enceladus, and Rhea. Here's where things get strange, though, most of the moons appear to be made up of water and ice. Titan's atmosphere was found to be 90% nitrogen. Atmospheric data showed that Titan might be the first planet in the solar system with liquid on its surface, that's apart from Earth, of course. Data also revealed the presence of nitrogen, methane, and other hydrocarbons that are a landmine for chemical reactions. As it approached its interstellar mission, it took a few years to retrieve new information. On February 17, 1988, Voyager 1 became the first human-made object to exist as far as a distance of 69.4 astronomical units from the Sun. On December 16, 2004, the spacecraft was detecting very high values of intense magnetic fields at a distance of 94 astronomical units. This indicated that it was entering the heliosheath. What's the heliosheath, you ask? In simple terms, it's a place where wind in outer space slows down as it begins to enter interstellar space. There are a few parts within the heliosheath that scientists have named for easier understanding. We have the termination shock, which is the innermost part of the boundary, the heliopause, which is the outermost part of the boundary, and the part in between the termination shock and the heliopause. Now, Voyager 1 was signaled to have passed the termination shock where it was experiencing all those magnetic fields. Once it exited the heliopause, after 28 days, it began measuring the interstellar environment. So, to wrap up all the discoveries, Voyager 1 and 2 surpassed the gas giants of the outer solar system, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. It discovered three new moons at Jupiter, four new moons at Saturn, eleven new moons at Uranus, and six new moons at Neptune. It's amazing how it hasn't been destroyed by any asteroids or orbited out of axis after all these years. Matter of fact, most technology from a few decades ago is almost unusable to this day. So, what exactly is Voyager made out of that makes it so special to last in space after nearly 50 years? What makes Voyager so special? You're probably wondering what makes Voyager so indestructible, especially given the material and technology in the 70s as compared to today. After all, it's traveling in the toughest environments possible. This is no walk in the park, it's more like a walk to the unknown with no gravity or air. There's no telling what kind of chemical reactions take place up there with the material that's used to being surrounded by air and all the elements in it. Luckily, the engineers designed it in a way that it could withstand whatever you throw at it. The potential risks they had in mind include stuff like cosmic radiation, extreme temperatures, whether hot or cold, and space rocks that range from tiny pebbles to huge asteroids that could wipe out Earth from the solar system. The power source it uses is a special nuclear battery, a more accurate and scientific name for it is a radioisotope thermoelectric generator. Each generator contains 24 spheres made of plutonium oxide and can generate up to 470 watts of electric power when launched. The remaining power is lost as waste heat during its course. The cool thing about plutonium is that its half-life is 87.7 years, which means it'll take a very long time for the source to degrade. If you do the math, Voyager 1 should have roughly 40 more years in space to go out with a bang, but scientists say that the plutonium will support the spacecraft until 2025, those scientists say that the plutonium will support the spacecraft until 2025. For context, the scientists claim that it will still be able to operate a few instruments but it wouldn't have the power to transmit the data back to Earth. A lightweight material known as aluminum or high-grade titanium is used for its outer shell because it can withstand the extreme temperatures in outer space. Voyager 1 is like a satellite that's meant to operate in the vacuum of space. Since the material has no air, heat cannot be conducted or convected like on Earth, which makes it so durable. If you could take all the physical characteristics of Voyager 1, you could fit it all within a single cube with each side measuring roughly 3.5 feet. What's incredible about this is that scientists have designed it to have an antenna, a variety of scientific instruments, power sources, and a computer. With the outer covering, a special type of paint and material is used to deflect the intense rays of the sun and other celestial bodies. It also has the ability to protect it from the extreme cold as it ventures deep into space. 
Its famous antenna is a high-gain one, which ensures that it can transmit data over long distances to NASA's Deep Space Network. The system has also been made to adjust the spacecraft's trajectory with small rockets to make sure that it remains on course during the mission. It only weighs about 722 kilograms, including 105 kilograms of science instruments and 345 kilograms of apparatuses. Since it's up in space, the mass of the craft is irrelevant. This means Voyager 1 is one of the most technologically advanced spacecraft of its time because it's made to carry multiple instruments. This includes high-resolution cameras, ultraviolet spectrometers, infrared sensors, and particle detectors. Each instrument has a very specific task to complete and relays its data back to Earth with the use of the antenna. This was a groundbreaking invention in the 1970s because of the unique design of the instruments. The antenna would use radio waves to communicate with ground stations. These would then take a couple of days to be transmitted across long distances and decoded by scientists back at NASA. This is why Voyager 1's achievements will go down in history as the most successful missions in space travel. The biggest thing about Voyager 1 is the golden record. It contains sounds, images, and greetings in various languages, which serve as a time capsule or message to any intelligent extraterrestrial civilization that may encounter the spacecraft in the future. In other words, Voyager 1 will serve as a relic for many years to come if found by aliens. These records were also made by Carl Sagan, who was a part of the mission in the 1970s. He decided to put in the sound of a baby crying, human laughter, and 115 images, which would basically show aliens what life on Earth was like. The record is meant to show that there's intelligent life beyond Earth. This idea may sound strange, but this is the most popular thing about the spacecraft. There's also an inscription on the cover of the records which provides directions to Earth and an explanation of how to play the record. Voyager 1 has a message for aliens in space. Voyager 1 made a lot of scientific data about our solar system possible. The countless images and data changed how we thought of our existence and what was in space. The truth is that there's no limit to what we can achieve if we put our minds to it. These spacecraft are made with the most basic technology compared to what we have today. Scientists today wouldn't even imagine using the materials and the types of metals from decades ago. There are no 3D printers that could print an entire rocket in a matter of hours with the highest grade of carbon fiber. There are no advanced radio frequencies that use encryption and advanced sensors to capture images on the surface of planets. Voyager 1 has managed to prove all the naysayers wrong when it comes to the discovery of life outside Earth. Who knows what Voyager 1 will achieve in the next couple of years? It could be the message that changes the way we think of life forever. Scientists are still on the lookout for the next signal, which could be a sign from aliens. It's only a matter of time before something fascinating happens. Until then, we'll just have to wait and see what the next chapter of Voyager 1 is.